All right, this week in lab, we're going to learn the names of muscles. And it might seem like a lot. It's pages 63 and 64 um, are all the names of the muscles. It seems like a lot, but actually there are about 35 of them, muscles or muscle groups. And keep in mind that inside of the human body, there actually are 640 muscles with names. So if you were an anatomist, you'd really have a lot of muscles to learn. So pages 63 and 64. Page 65 and 66, those are muscle actions. And make sure you watch the video on the muscle actions because I'm not going to ask you to learn all of those, but you won't know which ones you don't have to learn unless you watch the video. All right, here's a big overview. You don't even have to know all of these muscles. Let me point out that the front of your thigh, it has got the vastus medialis and the vastus lateralis and the rectus femoris and the gracilis and, but we're not asking you to learn all of those. Ditto on the back of the thigh, biceps femoris, semitendinosus, semimembranosus, gracilis, but you don't have to learn all of them because we're going to ask you to learn a couple of muscle groups. This chapter in your lab manual is divided up into muscles of the face, muscles of the neck and such. So that'll give you a guideline. Um, uh, my TAs have shared with me their advice for learning all of these things. And they say to focus on just one area at a time, like learn all of the muscles of the head and the neck and always learn them in the same order, right? Go over them in the same order. Let's start with the muscles of the head and the neck. On these PowerPoints, what I've done is I've taken the image from your textbook and then the muscles that you need to learn the names of, I have put those in a larger, bolder font. This would indicate that you do not need to know the occipitalis, but you do need to know the frontalis. You don't need to know the zygomaticus major, but you do need to know the buccinator. Right? So the ones that are in bigger, bolder, and I usually have done them in color font, those are the ones you need to know. Now you just finished mastering all of the bones of the skull. So you know this is the frontal bone and this is the frontalis muscle. And the frontalis muscle lets us go, oh, like I'm surprised. It lets you raise your eyebrows. That's what the frontalis muscle does. Then we've got the temporal bone. And the temporal bone, the muscle here, is the temporalis. The temporalis is one of the muscles that closes your jaw. I don't know if you ever made your dad mad in your lifetime, but when I would make my dad mad, my dad had short hair, and um, if I made my dad mad and he was like gritting his teeth so he wouldn't say something he regretted, you could see this muscle kind of bulging. That is the temporalis. Now, we've got two muscles that are both called orbicularis, the orbicularis oculi and the orbicularis oris. Um, an orb, orb, like in science fiction movie, the wizard might hold this glowing sphere and they call it an orb. Um, so the orbicularis is a circular muscle. And you've got two of them. The orbicularis oculi goes around the eye and the orbicularis oris goes around the mouth. When the, orbicularis, when the orbicularis oris contracts, you squint your eye like that. That's the orbicularis oris. The, I'm sorry, the orbicularis oculi around the eye lets you squint. The orbicularis oris lets you purse your lips as if you're about to whistle. So that's what the orbicularis oris does. Speaking of whistling, this muscle here, the buccinator, is also used in whistling. The buccinator is right in here. So if you're ever like pulling in your cheeks to like do that duck lip thing that people do on selfies, you're using your buccinator muscle. Or if you're whistling, you're using the orbicularosaurus and the buccinator. The masseter, the masseter. My TAs very often will pronounce it the mass eater so that people can remember it's this one right here, this one that allows you to close your jaw. So how does it let you close your jaw? Well, you just learned all the muscles of the skull, right? This right here is the zygomatic bone 
and the zygomatic process of the temporalis. So this is right here, your cheekbone, the zygomatic arch, and the mass cedar is attached there, and then it's attached down here to your mandible. So when it shortens, then you close your jaw. Now we have got the sternocleidomastoid. The sternocleidomastoid, uh, you're gonna find it on my quizzes guaranteed, okay? Uh, why? Because um, its name is long and hard to spell and its name tells you what bones it attaches to. So what is that bone right there? Well, it's the temporal bone, but specifically this is the mastoid process of the temporal bone. And the sternocleidomastoid is attached to the mastoid process and that's where the mastoid comes from. Where else is this muscle attached? It's also attached down here. This right here is my sternocleidomastoid. And it's attached to my sternum right here at the, um, oh, I forgot the name of that part of the sternum, manubrium. Okay, and it's attached to my clavicles. So sternum, clavicles, mastoid process, sternocleidomastoid. And the sternocleidomastoid lets us lift up our head if we were laying down and we wanted to look at the TV, right? So those are all the muscles for A and B. Now, I wanna point out a couple of things. On many of the images that you see from your textbook or here, um, here on the PowerPoint, this side, which is the right side of that person, right? The right side is different from the left side of that person and why? It is by convention that in images like this, on this side, we will show what it looks like if you just take off the skin. And on the right side, it'll be if you take off the skin and then take off another layer of muscles. So see this little, this little muscle here? This little muscle here, you can't see it with all those muscles above it. So if you wanna see it, you gotta take off another layer of muscles. Speaking of dissections, let me show you one of the resources that you have available to you on Connect. All right, here we are on Connect. And when you're on Connect, whether you're on the lab side or the lecture side, you have got, you know, your, sorry. You have got your textbook, right? Right up there. You've got a practice atlas. Ooh, I've never played with that. And then you've got this thing called Anatomy and Physiology Revealed, and it allows you to dissect a cadaver. So, warning, we're about to go look at a cadaver, okay? Oh, here's our gonna be our cadaver. So first you have to go, sorry, up here and select a module, right? And we are going to select muscular, then you need to go here and select a topic, select a topic, and we are going to select muscles of the head and neck. And then we need to select a view. Do we wanna see them from the side? Do we wanna see them from the anterior? That's from the front, from the side, that's lateral. From the back, that's posterior. I have never looked at mid-sagittal. I really should do that, but let's go anterior. Okay, so here is our cadaver. One of the things we can do is say, hey, I would like to see the buccinator. If I wanna see the buccinator, let me just turn off this mouse. If I wanna see the buccinator, it is right there in purple. And you can see I've taken off the skin of this cadaver. And this is the first layer of muscles that's underneath. Let's look at the frontalis muscle. Oh, right there so I can raise my eyebrows. Let's look at the orbicularis unculi. There you go, the orbicularis oris right there around the mouth. Let's look at the sternocleidomastoid. Here you can see it's attached to the, okay, I don't know. It's attached right here to the clavicle and right here to the manubrium of the sternum. And if we wanted to, we could look at all of this stuff sorry, head and neck, all of this stuff from the side. Let's go look at it from the side. And 
uh, we actually can, if we want to, take off one layer at a time. Sorry. There you go. We just took off the skin, right? And then we can click, and that's the occipitalis. See, these are muscles we don't need to know the name of, though. So here's the mass eater muscle. There you go. The mass eater muscle is hidden a little bit there. Let's look for the buccinator again. There's the buccinator. Good. All right. And the sternocleidomastoid. Ta da. Right. Oh, the temporalis. Ta da. All right. So that's available to you. So you can go ahead and round with that as much as you like. It's free. Now, we've got the torso muscles seen from the front. The torso muscles seen from the front. Now, on this image, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be this side that has just had the skin taken off, but it's this side where the skin's been removed and also a layer of muscles has been removed, all right? So let's start with the deltoid. The deltoid is right here. The deltoid is right here. If you got a flea shot, get your flu shot. If you did, if it's fall, sorry, this might be spring. I got my flu shot just a little while ago. And they generally give you your vaccines right here into your deltoid muscle. When your deltoid muscle contracts, it lifts your arm away from the side, and that is called abduction. A B D U C T I O N. Abduction. Okay, so that is the deltoid. The deltoid is right here. I think I've got a picture of it from the side, right? Then your major chest muscles are the pectoralis major. If you're in the gym and your training partner says, hey, let's work pecs, they are probably talking about the pectoralis major. The pectoralis major is a complicated muscle. One of the things the pectoralis major can do is what is known as adduction. Adduction means pull the arm across the midline of the body. That's the pectoralis major. Now, if I cut off the pectoralis major and look underneath, I will find the pectoralis minor. Pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. By the way, many muscles have got two names. We learned this actually on the very first day of class. Many muscles have got two, two names. And um, make sure you put both names or you'll only get half credit. So pectoralis major. Now, we also have got the serratus anterior. You can see the serratus anterior a little bit when the pectoralis major is there, but you see it better when the pectoralis major has been removed. So the pectoralis minor kind of, it attaches to ribs. So a little bit, it looks like a serrated knife or like a bread cutting knife, um, but the serratus anterior really looks like a serrated knife, and it is attached to the ribs. All right, serratus anterior. Oh, the rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis. If anyone's got a six pack or an eight pack or whatever, it is because of their rectus abdominis. And whether you've got six pack, eight pack, four pack is just an accident of birth. It is the shape of your rectus abdominis. The rectus abdominis allows the torso to curl. So if you're doing uh, curls as you're working your abs, uh, you are mostly working your rectus abdominis. One, uh, two other muscles you need to know. You need to know the external oblique and the internal oblique. As the name implies, the external oblique is on the outside and the internal oblique is on the inside. Okay. So the external oblique, the fibers are going kind of like when you're putting your hands into your pockets, okay? It's superficial, and the fibers go from high on the outside nearer as you go towards the belly button. The internal oblique, you can recognize it because the fibers are not only deeper, but go the opposite direction. 
they, it would be very hard to put your hands in that pocket. Okay, external oblique, internal oblique. We will start there at the beginning of the next video.